let's begin with the with the very basic first that uh, if you don't know what is pivot all about and why do you create in a pivot tables in microsoft excel so let me begin with a conceptual side first so that you can understand this feature easily and and a lot of uh, employees on their workplace uh, for the reporting purpose they used to create pivot tables to have quick analytics rather than uh, applying a complex formula in that particular situation so we are discussing about the pivot table and what are what is actually pivot is all about so pivot is a verb which means uh, we will be doing some actions with the data okay so what we are what we actually do in the pivot tables is we do some actions with the data database right and uh, and and the majority of the time we try to rotate and revolve around the databases okay so this is the very basic about the pivot tables when you create pivot tables in excel spreadsheet uh, definitely the size of the excel spreadsheets uh, gets increases so for example if your database size is approximately 15 mb in excel spreadsheet and if you are creating a lot of pivot tables into that excel workbook so what you can do is you can instead of uh, saving that excel file in an extension that is called .xlsx you can save it on xlsb that is in the binary format so if you want to reduce the file size of excel spreadsheet where when you have a lot of pivots because that increase the size so you can change the extension of that particular file okay so what actually pivot do for us is that they convert the data into summary reports and we can do some analytics not very much advanced analytics just like we have in the power pivot but yes up to some extent level we can create some standard reports and that can be uh, created in very less time so instead of uh, investing your time and a whole day in into that required report you can easily use the, these features in order to make a quick reports for your boss or manager so now we have a data set here and in this data set you will find some multiple columns uh, let me discuss the data first and uh, after understanding of the data you will be able to create some uh, summary reports okay all right so we have uh, the first column here which represents uh, the customer names into this column then we have different types of products available then different sales person who are selling those products to different customers then we have regions that in which particular region that sale has been occurred then we have definitely the very most important column of dates uh, then we have that amount that that particular amount has been sold on which date and in which particular region then we have some uh, date and time frame columns uh, that are year month and quarter right so this is one of the very common databases that i have took for this today's webinar where you can understand the data easily in your case if you are working in an hr comp hr or in finance or marketing side so you you also get your business data uh, and that could be having some multiple columns more than 10 12 and 25 uh, and and we hope that uh, the data is cleaned up because if you get the raw data uh, the chances are that in the raw data your data is not cleaned up as much uh, is possibly ready to make a pivot for that so it, at the initial step when you get the data from a data source uh, you are required to clean that data and there are so many techniques now available either you can use the text functions available in excel uh, either if you are an advanced level user you can use the power query uh, to transform your data set and then going for the pivot tables so we are assuming that uh, our this data is being nice ready and clean for the pivot now for the very first time when you are creating a pivot table uh, what you are required to do is select the entire data and then go to the insert tab click on pivot table 
okay so when you click on pivot table a pop up window will appear here create pivot table window uh, where this window is asking you that where to create the pivot table either in a new worksheet or in an existing worksheet right so we want a pivot table in a new worksheet so we will go with the default options available here and uh, we will press okay so when you press okay what happens is the next step microsoft excel will insert a new sheet and uh, you will see that sheet contains a pivot table now it has two sides uh, the, the left side which is uh, definitely a blank and the right side where you have a pivot table field list okay so whatever the columns uh, were there in the data set you will find all those fields here and when you drag and drop any of the field into the rel relevant areas your pivot table gets started uh, developing okay so it's very easy process to create a pivot uh, let's understand more about it for example if we want to see product wise sales so what i can do is uh, i have a product field here available so i will drag and drop this field into the rows areas okay and i will just drop it so it's very simple uh, with with the mouse left click of key of your mouse drag that field into that relevant section and drop here so now you can see that uh, there are four products in your data set here and uh, if if we want to have the sales number uh, in front of these products so what we are required to do is uh, we will drag the sales usd field into the values so whenever uh, in in the particular column you have the numbers such as uh, a sales number or a revenue number or or any kind of cost uh, you are required to put or plot that field into the values area so th so that you can do some calculations okay uh, whereas there is a choice if you want to see the report into a horizontal view or a vertical view with respect to different dimensions uh, you are allowed to switch the products from rows to columns so it will create a different view so it's entirely depend on the requirements that how you want to see the data now moving ahead one more step if uh, the manager says to you that okay fine that's i can see the product wise sales here uh, what what i more need is i want to see year wise sales so i so i can analyze better year wise sales so we have a field here that is called year so i will just drag this field and i will drop into the columns so now you can see that uh, on very next moment without applying any formula your pivot table get expanded column wise year wise okay so this is a very unique and uh, awesome feature of microsoft excel and one of the very very famous uh, pivot tables uh, because it will not let you require to apply many formulas and functions as we do normally in reports now what happens is here if if you observe in this pivot table first uh, the 2013 numbers and 2014 numbers are not uh, we are not seeing the exact numbers here because the width of the column is not uh, enough to show that into our entire big number so what we can do is we can just expand that column width okay now we can see the numbers clearly and second thing is that if if you are required to do the formatting for the numbers you can select the entire numbers data and go to home tab and click on comma formatting all right one thing you can also observe here is that there there are no sales in the year 2015 which are coming as a blank and sometimes you don't want blank cells in your pivot tables so how to fill the blank cells in your pivots so this is very easy let me tell you how to do it simply we will right click on this any blank cell and uh, in this contextual menu uh, you will find a second last option that is called pivot table options so i will click on pivot table options and here you will see a option that is available for empty cell show so whatever you write here that will definitely display on the blank cells in the pivot table so if i want zero to be replaced in this blank cells so i have written zero here and i will press ok so now you can see that now these cells are not blank anymore it's filled with a zero right all right 
So this was the very basic that how we can create a pivot table in Microsoft Excel. Moving ahead, let's move to another uh, option and exploring that feature that is called slicers in the pivot tables. And now, it, it could be possible that most of you uh, already explored slicers, right? Uh, but those of you who are very new to that, how we can do that, uh, let me tell you. So now in this current pivot table, you can see product wise sales and your manager says, I want to see only a specific year sales, for example, 2014 or 15, right? So there is a choice. Either you can drag and drop that year field into filters. So whenever you want to see a particular item from a list of columns, uh, so you drag and drop that field into the filters. So now you can see that on my pivot table on raw number one, it's written year and all. So I can just click on this small arrow and this filter menu will open. So, so I have a choice if I want to just see 2014 sales. So I will just check mark on that particular item and I will press OK button. So the numbers will get refreshed. So later on, if there is any change, for example, now my boss uh, just wants to see 2016. So I can just click on that and I will press OK. Right. But if you want another visual display, a different style to filter that context or the data, what you can do is you can insert the slicer and that's very easy. Uh, the first thing is that you, you are required to be in your uh, pivot table. If you are outside your pivot table, that particular option will not be available. So it's mandatory to be inside the pivot table. And uh, when you are inside your pivot table on top right side, you will find two tabs. The first one is analyze. And the second one is design tabs. Now these two tabs only visible when you are inside your pivot table. Okay. So when you go to the analyze tab, you will find in the filters group, there is a feature that is called insert slicer. So when you click on insert slicer, all the fields which are also available on the field list, pivot table field list are also available in the slicers. So we are required to create a slicer only for a one field at this particular time and that is for the years. So I have just check mark the year field and now I will press OK. So now you can see that we have a visual display, very nice visual display and we can just click on any of the year and you can see that this slicer is also working as a visual display and filtering the context, filtering that data and giving us the updated numbers, right? Now, for example, if you are required to select more than one year of your specific choice, so what you can do is you can, you are, you can press the control key and click on that particular years. So you can select the multiple uh, years from that slicer, right? So the slicers are very easy. Uh, let me just quickly repeat that. Whenever you are inside your pivot table, uh, you will find a tab on the right side on top that is called analyze and click on insert slicer. So you will find that particular entire list and whatever your slicers are, you can, you want to make just check mark on that. Okay. So for example, if you want to create a month slicer, you have that particular month slicer available, right? Okay. So next part, uh, as you know, that as, as an Excel user, you might have worked previously on Excel charts as well. Uh, and you know that Microsoft Excel charts are uh, useful when you want to have the data visualization and you want to have a decision making. So let's add one visualization object that is called charts. So how to insert a pivot chart uh, so that whenever we select a different year from here, uh, so we can analyze that how our product wise sales are growing. So what we can do is for inserting a pivot chart, Again, I will go to the analyze tab and I will click on pivot chart. Now in the latest version of Microsoft Excel, such as in 2016, 2019, uh, there is also a feature added that is called recommended pivot tables. So if you don't have any idea that what kind of chart will be best suitable for, for this data set, uh, Microsoft Excel recommended pivot tables suggest you some more pivots. 
okay so that's a recommendations from from the uh, latest features that it will allows you to examine your data from the different angles okay so for creating a chart we will click on pivot chart and uh, you will find a lot of different types of categories here so if you are using any older version such as 2010 or 2013 you will uh, not find many available charts such as waterfall or funnel charts or box and whisker whereas in the latest versions uh, you will find a lot of awesome categories and new charts available so for in this webinar we are just uh, we are not focusing more on visualizations whereas we are more focusing on pivot tables so uh, i will uh, start with a column chart and uh, now you can see that there is a column chart available on your spreadsheet right and now whenever you click on any of the year so you can see that that particular numbers are also changing from the pivot table and also that visualization is also changing so you have three objects right you have three objects on your spreadsheet the one is the pivot table the second one is the slicer and the third one is uh, the chart the there is one more feature where is very interesting uh that is called timelines so you can also add timelines and remember that in timelines uh you are only allowed to select the dates column basically timelines only work when you have a date column in your database so if you have a date column in your database so you can uh, insert the timeline as well with your pivot so let me do a quick demonstration for that so what i will do is i will just go again in inside my pivot table and on top right side i will click on analyze and i will click on insert timeline so it it giving me a one field only that is order dates and i will press okay so now this is one of the very interesting awesome feature available with the pivots that you can convert that entire timeline into different time periods so there is a drop down menu at the right side so when you click on that so how you want your timeline to be show year wise quarter wise month wise or day wise so for example if i want my timeline to show quarters so i will click on quarter so that you can see that without any formula your timeline is being now converted into quarters and you can just select that particular quarter or a year and uh, the numbers are changing from your pivot tables and uh, from the visualizations right so this is how uh the timeline features is very interesting right okay so moving towards the next technique is uh i will show you that how to create the report connections in order to make a quick dashboard for your uh, manager or your boss uh, and uh, that will be a highly interactive uh, feature so i hope you will find it very interesting and you will apply after the webinar at your workplace so how to create a report connections and uh, connect two different pivots so that it could work like a dashboard and with the clicks uh, whole report will get changed so the first step will be uh, you you have to select your entire pivot press control c for the copy and you are just required to paste that pivot to up to next some blank column so i have just uh, copied and pasted that pivot table and i will do some changes here so instead of uh, products in the second pivot let me just drag and drop the sales person so now i can see the sales sales person why so we have four sales person nurdin rafiq rahim and salim and uh, they are doing some sales and we can also analyze product wise sales and the sales person wise sales at the same time now in this particular pivot table i also want to filter according to the month so i want to get an idea that in which particular month how much sales has been made by each of the sales person so what i can do is i can insert a slicer and that's very easy i will go to an analyze tab and i will click on insert slicer and here i have a field that is called month okay and i will press okay so now you can see that you have a visual display of month and a scroll bar to scroll down 
if you want to select any month from Jan to December. So when you click on any month, you can see that that entire pivot table get refresh. And uh, if, if I want to see sales by salesperson for the month of July, so I, I will just click on July, right? It's very easy. Now, one thing is that how to customize that slicer as well. So if you find out that uh, this this list is very big and you want to change it into columns into more columns. So how you can do that. So when you click on slicer, you will find on top right side a slicer tab where you can customize with the slicers. You can change the format of that slicer uh, a color backgrounds, right? And the alignments height and width. But here we want to uh, ex exclude that scroll bar. We want to make that list short. And uh, what we are required to do is increase the number of columns. So by default, definitely the column number is one. So we will increase the number of columns into, for example, three. So now you can see that your vertical list has been converted into uh, more columns. And now it's uh, looking uh, very good, neat and clean. Okay. So now when I click on any of the month, that particular pivot is now being refreshed. And let's add one visualization to that particular pivot. So I will again go to analyze. I will click on pivot chart. And this time I will insert a column chart. And let me change the colors of that particular chart. It's very easy. Uh, you can go to the design tab on top right side and click on change colors. And let me select the red color for that, right? All right, so now we have on our this spreadsheet, what we have, we have two different sections. For example, this three objects, that is the pivot table on the left side, the slicer and that particular chart is entirely a one section, a separate section. Whereas on the right side, we have another different kind of a pivot table, a slicer of month, and and a chart relevant to that particular pivot second pivot okay now what we are required to do is to connect these two sections with each other so that it would work like a mini dashboard without any formula so for example if i click on any of the month here i want that this first pivot and the chart is also get updated with those respected numbers Whereas if I come to the left side first section, if I click on any of the year, you can see a difference. When I clicking on the year slicer, the entire report gets updated. So my first pivot is also refreshed. My second pivot is also refreshed and also both these visualization. Now this is particularly because by default, uh, pivot tables has their memory cache. And uh, when we copy and pasted that second pivot table, so the settings has also been connected with that. So the connection is already built from the one side. And we are required to check that the connections should be made from the both the sides. So to create a connection, you are required to have a slicer because you, you can only create a connection if you have a slicer uh, on that with that particular pivot. Okay, so let me give you a quick demonstration that how you can create connections and join two different pivot tables with each other so that it it could look like a connected report. So on this first slicer of the year slicer, I will right click on this slicer, you will find this contextual menu. And here you will find an option that is called report connections. So if you are using an older version, for example, 2010 or 13, um, in that particular version, you will find pivot table connections. But if you are using Excel 2016 and 19, uh, the option that this is called report connections. So when you click on report connections, so a, a report connection window will appear here and you can find that there are two pivot tables on sheet two pivot table one and pivot table three and both are connected. You can see a check mark on both these options, right? If we go to the second slicer, which definitely represent the second pivot table. So when I right click on this particular slicer, I will go to report connections. And now here you will find that one check mark is missing. 
So we are required to click on this check checkbox. Okay, and I will press OK. Now what happens is both these two different pivot tables are now connected with each other with the help of slicers. So whenever I will click on any of the month, you can see that your both pivots get updated. Right. And when I click on any of the year, again, the both pivot tables and the visualizations get updated. So with within very less time, uh, we were able to create a dashboard that contains no formula or function and on a different kind of time period, the numbers get filtered and you can report it to the further of your manager or any boss uh, you want to. So this is how uh, this report connection feature is very interesting, uh, which connects your different pivots into one and with one single click, uh, your whole report gets updated on on a single click, right? Now let's 